Hello everybody. I want to talk a little bit more about different ways that you can use to invite your horse to be on the bit. And the term on the bit, as I've talked about in previous videos, has to do with connecting the horse from the back to the front. It has to do with the circle of aids, a bunch of um, you know terms that you, if you're not familiar, you know, look them up and I'll put some links in my in the description of this video. Um, it's really important that you have clarity in your mind first before you try to engage your horse in those meaningful ways that we're, you know, talking about and that we're working on. And so, like I said, today I want to talk a little bit more about some details when you um, are inviting your horse. And I'm always saying inviting with a purpose not to say that you're making your horse be on the bed. <laughs> Um, so the invitation comes, of course, always from your legs and your seat first, and then your hands and your, you know, weight aids and your what you're doing with your positive tension in your body. Um, all those things come together so that you can communicate to the horse what you would like them to do. And I'm going to go into a walk mode here with Tana, just so that, you know, I'll refresh your memory a little bit. You know, there's another term that's really important to remember in all of this that's um, called the yielding to the inside aids and what that means is basically that you're teaching your horse to yield to your inside leg impulses right and I'm just going to demonstrate it here real quick a little bit let's say you're on the long rein and you can do this with any length of rein really any frame basically it's about saying to your horse with your left leg in this case um, please respond by stretching forward downward into my rein contact, the inside rein predominantly right now, and release in your jaw, with, which Tana does beautifully. She's understanding and we've been working on this for a while. And it is a super helpful detail if you remember that when we get to, to the point where in a moment I'll show you how to do these transitions on a curved line with her. To remember, the important part is to remember to invite your horse to yield to your inside aids before you go into the up transition in the trot. And ideally, you know, when you're in the trot for a few steps, you can still, you know, say the same thing to her or to your horse and say, you know, look, release in your jaw as I'm asking with my inside leg to engage your, your inside hind leg a little bit more so that the energy never gets stuck that you know from the jaw through the pole through the whole top line and through the whole you know circular um, energy flow there's not one piece in the horse or in the rider that's stiff or tight or blocked right so that is a lot of words to start <laughs> finally so i'm going to pick up my reins and i want you to you know try this with reins that feel reasonably you know short enough to have your horse in a bit of a working frame and i like to bridge them and i just make a little loop i don't know if you can see it here and so that i have a little bit of a you know really circular connection to the horse's mouth and in the beginning i'm going to go into a shoulder to shoulder mode here with tana and then i'm going to go into a little bit like a maybe a shape of a 10 meter circle here you know, and you can do it anywhere in your in your dressage arena, in your other arenas, whatever you have available. And just focus on riding a little shoulder to shoulder, 10 meter circle with your horse here. Focus on, you know, yielding occasionally, having your horse yield to your inside aids, a little bit of a jaw release. As you can see, Tana does that really nicely. And then when you have that, you breathe in and for your inside leg, impulse to get a little stronger you have to kind of breathe in outside leg is a little bit farther back as you can see and then you're going to give a little bit of a extra you know kind of vibrational impulse with your inside leg to go into the trot in the down transition and then back to shoulder to shoulder these things happen so fast sometimes i can't talk fast enough <laughs> but anyway so inside leg goes on inside leg stays stationary in the up transition and i always want to say in the beginning if you're not that um, familiar or able to keep your hands very quiet lock your inside hand and put it right next to the to the on the left side of your pommel and that way you're going to guarantee yourself that you're, it doesn't come up and down when you go into the trot the outside hand of course because you have bridged reins goes forward a little bit right 
and when you're in the in the trot it can be a little bit lower so the inside hand is by the pommel the outside hand is in this early stage a little bit lower and can also be a little bit you know touching either the saddle or your horse's neck depending on where all those things um, make more sense for you individually so I'm going to breathe in again a little bit of one, two, three, four, inside leg, breathe out, and in the out, out, or in the down transition, I breathe out, and my outside rein gets one big squeeze to inhibit the horse from just to keep trotting, and your knee pressure increases a little bit in the down transition. In the up transition, I'm going to do it again here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight that's when you know we get the transition i count these steps so that they are very very you know specific and not like an endless sitting trot especially if it's in the beginning of your session you're just gonna go breathe in one two three four five six breathe out seven eight the walk transition happens right and that is a very basic way to help your horse Understand that when you go in the up into the up and the down transitions, you want them to engage their hind legs and you're pretty much in, you know, this bend shape that bends your horse around your inside leg where it's much, much harder and, and, and really not even that tempting for the horse to come up with their neck and brace or resist um, to what you're asking, right? I'm going to do it one more time and one, two, three, four, five, six and eight and we're in the walk and that's pretty much it you know and then you can give your horse a, lo a long rein and say okay so we did this and now we're going to change directions i'm not going to do that here you don't need to watch me do it for that much of the time but just to give you an idea that these are things that you can use to help yourself and your horse with these um beginning you know, invitations of staying on the bit or even, you know, being soft and through and connected from the, eventually from the back to the, to the front. And, you know, the, the, it's not that important at this point, at this early stage, you know, if your horse's pole cannot be at the highest point of your whole structure, long, um, longitudinal top line silhouette, it isn't that, you know, you, everything has to be perfect right off the bat, but it is important that you say to your horse, let's keep these three curved lines, you know, your neck, the back, and then the haunches that kind of tuck under, or think of those as these movable elastic curved structures, that we keep those swinging and elastic, and that we're starting to develop a sense of balance throughout the whole horse's body and the rider on top, of course. And so it's just an invitation, like I said, you know, to say to your horse, hey, let's, let's, let's see where this takes us, right? And again, you know, don't be discouraged if it doesn't work right away. A sitting trot, too, doesn't have to be very big. It can be a baby trot. Um, but give it a try. And when you have these things, you know, a little bit more in your pocket, then you can also ride serpentines across the arena. And on each of the curved parts of the serpentines, you can, you know, do your walk trot transitions. Anyway, that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed this segment. And I wish you lots of fun and happy riding. <laughs>